His seven women look exactly the same in appearance, but they can only live with the one identity. If one of them goes out, the other six can only stay at home and are not allowed to go anywhere. Once their identities are discovered, waiting for them is a never-ending hunt. It turns out that the future Earth's population explosion has led to a shortage of food production. Scientists have invented improved crops with high yields, but genetically modified food has also affected humans. At that time, newborns with multiple births and genetic diseases became the norm. In order to prevent the population crisis from worsening, Dr. Kamen established the Child Allocation Bureau with official support and introduced the policy of one child per family. Each family's extra children are forced to sleep in cryo chambers. They will be awakened only after the population crisis is over. But by then, their loved ones would be long gone. And that's not all. People are also strictly supervised in their daily lives. Checkpoints have been set up in every region. Everyone must wear a child allocation bureau bracelet and be scanned for identity before they can move freely. But even under these circumstances, Grandpa Willem is still raising seven grandchildren at the same time. He came up with a way to tell them apart. Willem named the girls after Monday through Sunday. Willem built a secret room in his house. He taught them and trained the seven sisters to hide their identities. If someone came to visit them unexpectedly, the other six girls would quickly pack up their belongings and erase all traces of them to hide in the secret room. They left only one girl in the living room. Once the seven sisters were out of the house, they had to share the same identity. They could not tell anyone that she had other sisters. Each of the seven sisters was only allowed to go out on the day of her name. For example, if it's Saturday, then only Saturday would be allowed to go out. When someone returns that night, they must show the video of her day to the other six sisters so that no one would find anything strange. Willem also prepared special bracelets for them to be checked by the authorities. And so they lived in peace for 30 years. 30 years later, the seven sisters have grown up. Their personalities and styles were very different, but they all worked in the bank as Karen Sedman. Until one day the seven sisters' peaceful life was shattered. One of the septuplets lost a finger in an accident. Their grandfather Willem saw it, turned around, pulled out a kitchen knife, and sterilized it on the gas stove. He wanted to cut off the same part of the same finger from the girl's six other sisters. He injected anesthetic into the girl's hands one by one. Then he took the tool and cut off their index fingers. The seven sisters have lived together since Willem's death. The first day of the new week was Monday's day to go out, even though she was in poor health and vomiting. But Monday still had to go to work as Karen Setman. In the elevator, she meets a competitor in the company's campaign. Adrian opens his mouth and threatens to tell her that he knows Karen's secret. Adrian says he'll keep an eye on her. This makes Monday feel nervous and scared. Is it possible that the secret of her seven sisters has been revealed? The night went on until 12 a.m. The other six sisters didn't see Monday come home. They checked their location system and found out that Monday had turned off her bracelet's location. The next day Tuesday puts on her makeup and goes looking for Monday. Tuesday arrives at work to find that Karen Sedman has already been promoted. She also learned that Monday had gone to the bar last night to celebrate her promotion. The receptionist told Tuesday that Karen had an argument with a co-worker last night. As soon as Tuesday left the bar, she found out that what was coming was still coming. Several people from the Child Allocation Bureau brought Tuesday to Dr. Kamen, the director. Kamen told her that she already knew their secret and that they were selfish because they had taken food and water from the others. After she finished, she had her men gouge out Tuesday's eyes. Then some strong men came to their house. They used Tuesday's eyes to identify the access control system and open the door. The other five sisters knew through the surveillance that danger was coming. The five of them immediately hid in the secret room, as they always do. However, Cayman's men knew where the switch was located. They took the first sisters out of the chamber. When he asked where the last woman was, first day, who was lurking in the darkness, took the opportunity to attack him with a tool. The other four sisters saw this also have to fight things to attack them. So with the cooperation of their five sisters, they finally worked together to kill the five strong men after a fight to the death. But Sunday was shot and killed in the chaos. The sisters felt very sad and painful since the identity of the seven sisters had been revealed. So they no longer had to disguise themselves as Karen. 
On that day, Wednesday puts on her favorite civilian clothes and finds Adrian, the colleague who knows her secret. Wednesday thinks that Adrian has revealed the secret of the Seven Sisters. However, Adrian only knew about it but didn't tell anyone about it yet, because Adrian intended to use it as a bargaining chip to blackmail Karen to give up her promotion position. In fact, Karen and Cayman signed an agreement and then Adrian is shot by a sniper from a distance. Wednesday was about to escape, but she immediately found herself surrounded by the agents who had arrived. But the good thing is that Wednesday loves to work out and box. She's the best fighter of the Seven Sisters. Wednesday killed a strong man with her superior martial arts skills and her strong body. Then she picked up the gun and used his finger to unlock the fingerprints. Wednesday then shot the rest of the men with her gun. Friday was in front of the computer and remotely helped Wednesday plan her escape route. Wednesday then jumped from the third floor to the floor and escaped the room. But she was followed by a number of pursuers who would not let her go. Wednesday follows the instructions to an unfinished building with a large number of poor people. People were protesting. When they saw the child allocation to staff coming, they took out all their frustrations on them. This bought Wednesday time to escape. The soldier running in the crowd shot Wednesday in front of the crowd to catch her. But he wounded many innocent poor people by mistake. Friday let Wednesday to reach the roof. Once Wednesday got there, she was able to get him home safely. But just then, there was a sudden knock on the door behind them. Child allocation to your role aging Jerry had found them. It seemed that Jerry had been involved in something with one of the seven sisters before. The rest of them put Wednesday aside for the moment. They decided to let Saturday open the door to greet Jerry. But as soon as Jerry entered, he touched Saturday's body. The three sisters were all confused. None of the three of them knew Jerry, but Friday thought they could use Jerry's bracelet to infiltrate the Child Allocation Bureau servers. So they decided to send Saturday home with Jerry. Friday watched them leave and then went back to the computer to rescue Wednesday. Wednesday was on the roof looking at the distance between the two buildings, but could only jump to the opposite roof to escape. But suddenly a man on the roof of the opposite building shot at her. Two sisters saw this scene stunned. Wednesday also fell off the roof. On the other side, Saturday had to cooperate with Jerry in order to get information about the child allocation bureau. They put their bodies together. Friday took the opportunity to hack into the child allocation bureau surveillance via a bracelet connection. They found out that Monday was still alive. After Saturday slept with Jerry, Jerry said he didn't want to see her only on Monday. So Saturday instantly understood the person Jerry was secretly dating was Monday. Saturday rushed to tell her sisters the news. But as soon as she finished speaking, several agents were already standing behind Saturday. Saturday lost her breaths before she could finish her I love you speech to them. So the two sisters watched Saturday leave this world. But before they could grieve, a group of soldiers surrounded the two sisters again. They rushed to escape through the back door in order to help her sister delay. She waited for Thursday to go downstairs and then raised the escape ladder. Friday went back to the computer despite Thursday's advice. Friday sent the evidence of her existence and that of the other six sisters to Thursday. After she did so, she said I love you to Thursday. Then Friday detonates the gas and dies with the back eyes. Jerry saw the explosion and rushed to the scene. He thought it was the love of his life, so he was devastated. But as soon as he got into the car, he was held hostage by a knife wielding Thursday. Jerry realized that the woman he loved was one of the septuplets, so the two of them decided to go together to rescue Monday. Jerry pushed the dead Thursday into the child allocation bureau. Thursday watched the poor child being put into the hibernation chamber, but what happened in the next scene made her dumbfounded. It turns out that the so-called frowning hibernation chamber is actually a human incinerator. Thursday rushed to open the bracelet to record the scene. Then she worked with Jerry to defeat the unconscionable staff. They found their way to the room where Monday was being held. They found that the person locked in this room was Tuesday, who had her left eye gouged out by someone else. Next, the scene switches. A woman appeared in front of Cayman. She is actually the first missing one of the seven sisters. Monday, it turns out that Monday used the bank's authority to transfer huge sums of money and signed an agreement with Cayman. Monday wanted to eliminate the other six sisters through Cayman's means so that she can become the only Karen Seven in the world and Cayman can use the money to further her ambitions. Jerry and Tuesday beat the guards to the control room. They gradually uploaded evidence of Cayman's crimes onto the screen at the lecture. Thursday disguises herself and meets Monday in the bathroom. Monday pulls a gun on Thursday. Monday confesses that she's tired of living with the six of them in the same identity. So the two of them fought in the toilet. Then came the sound of gunfire. Finally Karen Seven came to the speech in costume. By this time, 
The data from Tuesday have been uploaded here. The video of the burning girl appeared on the big screen. Overlaid with the original image, Cayman had a look of horror on her face. Her crime was made public. Cayman's reputation is now in tatters. Karen Seven smiled from the stage. It turns out that during the duel between the two sisters in the toilet, Thursday grabbed the gun and shot Monday. But Monday hadn't lost her breath completely. Monday came to the venue with her last breath. She grabbed the gun and aimed at Thursday. But the agent next to her saw her and shot her down. The next second Jerry appeared on the scene and shot the agent dead. With her last breath, Monday told Thursday that Monday found out that she was pregnant. So Monday had no choice but to sign a deal with Cayman for Jerry and the baby. And then Monday died in her sister's arms. And that's how Cayman was removed from her position. The child distribution law was finally repealed. Although the demographic crisis on Earth was still intact, but every newborn child was given the right to be free. The child in Monday's womb was also preserved. What do you think of the movie and the story? This is Save Review. You can subscribe and leave comments if you have any ideas. Thanks for watching. See you next time.